MSI champions, the world's champions, are back on the European stage. Small chunk, but there Whoa, it is. Oh, what a sun is from Crown. Flash is out of the way. Viper finds an ulti, but that's going to be all she wrote on this one. Optic just play a perfect from minute one to minute 31. They're going to clean out the Nexus and they'll finish week two as the LCS's only undefeated team. Welcome everyone to Esports in 30. I'm Lisa Duan. This is Matt Hempstead, and every major region is back in action for yes. their summer splits. Matt, it was a very busy weekend in the world of League of Legends, so why don't you hit us with a quick recap? Quick recap is the LCS is kind of wild because <laughs> Optic Gaming is alone in first place at 4 0, which I don't think anyone would be uh, telling you right now. And then you have like Team Liquid middle of the pack. Mm. Um, the only thing that's really expected is 100 Thieves sitting at 0 4, which is uh, a little sad. Uh, and then over in EU, same as always, G2 looks really strong, but I mean, there's a lot of exciting rookies to watch out for. Larson on Rogue, right. uh, uh, Humanoid stepping up in Splice in his second split. So uh -huh. there's a lot of change in EU and a lot of people to keep an eye on. So really exciting in both regions, but main storyline, Optic, what on earth? That is insane. Well, just a second, we're gonna call up our friend Veteran for some EU talk. But before that, let's check out some highlights from the LEC's opening week. Man, here comes Nuketuck. He's got the Hextech ultimatum. That will dodge the stun, but at what cost? Manages to get the shield up for now. There's the kill onto Attila. Just a matter of time as now Jack Troll is running for his life. Alfari completed the teleport. Will get himself a couple autos. One more power cord will do it. Here comes Vitality, defensive flash. That was greedy for the tower, but it might just be worth it. Cataclysm will get interrupted by the Emperor's Divide, but there's just not enough survivability. Jack Troll's Cosmic Radiance was unavailable. Oh, get back in here! Jensuke, get back here! And it is all falling apart. Vitality are trying to chase the loss, trying to turn the game around, and it is simply not happening. Look at them go, they're not going to stop. Jazuke is just toying with Origin right now. And the ace for Patrick in Origin. They take down Vitality. First and only ever behind death for upset. Here comes Selfmade. That's a fantastic prison. Oh. What a fantastic true shot barrage! Oh, Shulka routed and wrecked. Upset's running for his life. This will be his second ever death. All right, Brawl's ultimate's back up available. Selfmade, where's the prison? He's thrown it. Oh, He's upset. hit on the Upset's down. Winter's bike doesn't do anything, but that damage and a death for Moto. Baron was enlisted by SK Gaming. They get a double, and now the Baron. SK has stood oh. tall, but there's a hijack. Stolen Robwolf, stolen Robwolf, and SK Gaming due to Shulker. What's been done to them? They are winning fight after fight thanks to Robwolf. The next is a big chunk. Down. SK Gaming are looking for the win. SK Gaming take down Shulker. Alec fans, maybe a bit of fate for you here. Brox coming towards the mid lane. Nemesis lands the root prison, and Brox is on the board. But I think he may have also just misclicked. I mean, it's possible. It looked like a very good play, though. It's Boxer comes up towards the top side once again, and so as is a punching bag. Stolen away to Jack's ultimate. Broxer still in position to jump in. Reckless is going down towards the bottom lane. He's not with the team. Whippo jumps forward. There goes Broxer as well. Oh! Away! Fanatic takes the Baron. Misfits will take a few kills off this. Whippo oh, goes, goes in. Double stun lands. Broxer with the chainsaw to hunt some of the hunt some survives. He blocks the dragon's rage as well. You have to keep your eyes on that Sivir. That's all that matters. But Vivian's going to take down to the Ignite Hunt Summer. Whippo gets onto him. Nemesis damage. This one up, Soaz trying to run away from his former teammates. They'll take down Soaz, they'll take down the Nexus Towers, and they will take a 2 0 weekend. In the bottom, oh, Patrick, caught out. Patrick oh. caught out the unleashed power would be enough to take him down. He managed to get in the bush, but Perks secures the kill. Mithy dumped on the cataclysm to the face. It's a double for Perks. Yanko sliced up to Sashimi and Wonder healing up so much. Perks goes in. Going in with the flash. Better storm comes out. He, oh. the cone. he takes him down. Yanko down to half HP. Perks there. Pops his ultimate as Cold jumps out. New Duck forced up towards the top side of this fight. You have to feel it's gonna go down first. Patrick jumping forward though, trying to get the kills. He can't do enough damage. Mickey flashes across the wall. And Patrick found up. The Hemo played his tick tick boom. Double kill goes down to Caps. And G2 have come out totally on top. The MSI champions, the world's champions, are back on the European stage.
the number one region in the world, that's right, kicked off their summer split in exciting fashion. And to help us break it all down, we've got our friend Veteran joining us. How's it going? Hi, it's great to be back, and thanks for introducing you up in the accurate manner. Of course, of course, we got to give respect <laughs> where it's due That's for it. now. Uh, we need to open up with the MSI champions, G2 Esports. There were some questions on how they would perform after their very busy midseason, but they're currently 2-0 uh, after their mm. first week. So uh, how did you think they did, and did you see any signs of maybe rust? Um, so the big issue that they had at MSI and the, the issue that I was worried that they might be more abused about if they met like IG, for example, is that uh, with their top side, which they were using better than almost anyone else when no one was really using their top side uh, in Europe, uh, at MSI, they were making far too many plays away from Wonder when he was strongest. Um, but this week, uh, this week, they decided to play compositions that were le heavily more towards perks. Their AD carry, who will swap from mid and has been performing phenomenal. Nominally, uh, for someone who's only been in the role for five months. Um, and that seemed to work out uh, quite well for them, but this doesn't really tell me if they fixed their particular issues from MSI that I would necessarily have an issue with. So, like, Wanda didn't necessarily have, like, the best game of his life versus Origin, but if any team is going to beat G2, it is Origin, and they won anyway, uh, in large part because of their mid to bot section. Um, Patrick on Origin's side, uh, who's their AD carry, who's in his second year now, he, uh, he had a really 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 good game and it almost looked like he was going to carry the entire thing uh, and origin were about as close to beating g2 as anybody has been for a long time uh, including them but this was this was the challenge for g2 and after this like every other team if they were to beat g2 it would be a monumental upset origins like the only team people thought could do it and they couldn't even do it now when you would imagine g2 uh, are a bit tired and a bit uh mm -hmm. probably yeah. not like as on their a game as they otherwise would be yeah, I want to hone in on Perks a little bit, and you mentioned it. They're really playing towards him, and it kind of showed that he had yeah. that 15 kills Zaya game. It's his second full split yes. playing AD carry now, so, I mean, they already won MSI, but if this guy <laughs> continues to grow in that role and they actually play towards him, how much stronger can G2 get? Like, what's his ceiling? <laughs> If you yeah, so yeah, I mean the ceiling aspect is like a really good question because bot lane has changed from the old days when Forgiven and Reckless were like the dominant <laughs> yeah. ones. You now have a lot of like mage types in bot lane uh, and we've heard from like uh, Captain Jack for example that uh, the Tom Kenchman came out versus uh, G2 because they were worried that they would be able to play mages bot and then they played Syndra bot lane anyway uh, and Perks is really uniquely placed to already play like this gigantic subset of champions that players like Reckless uh, have even subbed themselves out because they're not right. able to play. Like Reckless uh, swap with Whippo last year, for example. So uh, he probably has a higher ceiling than any other AD carry in the role right now. And on top of that, he's already proven that he can play the lane out itself uh, against the best in the world. So the ceiling is incredibly high for because he can still only get better. Like I, I would still argue players like Patrick are able to play the standard AD carries uh, better than Perks is like mechanically. But I think mm -hmm. Perks' understanding of the game is just better. And, and there's no reason for us not to think that Perks is going to mechanically get there on all of these champions. He's got he's going to provide way more options for G2 than most AD carries can provide for their teams. Yeah, I wanted to know, do you guys like the idea of, um, instead of having players locked to a lane, it's more like de champion dependent, right? Because obviously Riot's going to continue to patch and improve champions, and when we see that, maybe we'll end up getting more like a Dota style game where it's not you're not locked necessarily to a lane, but it's more like you go where the champions take you. Do you guys like that idea for League of Legends? I mean, I yeah, think... And G2 would absolutely love that. Sorry <laughs> to interrupt you, yeah. but G2 have like, they've done Funnel, for example. The moment yeah. that they could do Funnel, they did it. They've yeah. done all these kind of strange setups. I feel like as the game like evolves more towards like less of a fixed state as it is now, mm -hmm. G2 would be the team that would benefit from that the most out of any team, except maybe Origin, because Origin have a very smart uh, set of players on their team. They'd see it, but G2 are the ones that are just naturally inclined to go that way. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they do some really crazy things in well sometimes. Yeah. They even had, I think there were rumors about like Caps going bot and Perks going yeah. mid just because of whoever is better at a certain champion going mid yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's a whole new element of it, like it really for coaches does. too, right? And analysts to yeah. balance that out. Especially for grabs, give him some more creativity, <laughs> which is, uh, I mean, he's already yes. got a lot of it, but yeah, he, he can use some more. <laughs> uh, let's touch on Origin because they had a shot at revenge against G2, but again, yeah. the MSI champs scraped their way to another win over OG. I mean, this team is the top contender in Europe and they've been battling against G2 we saw in the finals and in the winners finals, but they just can't pick up a win. So what's holding them back from actually taking down G2? Because it was really close. 
Um, so I think that a large amount of it is that three members of G2 have already played together for a year beforehand. I think uh, Origin is only going to get stronger. Uh, again, they have five phenomenally smart players. Like, most of these players, if you put them on any other team, would be leading that team strategically, you know? Um, but uh, as is, they're, they're all on the same, and as a result, you have a team that has, like, the... They have the mechanical skill to pull off almost, like, any kind of composition they can play early game they can play late game uh, they can play all sorts of things but at the same time they're smart enough to focus their plans based on the opponents that they're against i think the only real reason why g2 is being able to like uh, throw a lot at them in best of five scenarios that they haven't seemingly overcome is just because it's a bunch of game plans that they haven't otherwise met because g2 are so flexible right. you know but i think the more game plans that origin come up against the smarter they'll become and i, I think they're the only team that can be a genuine contender for them just because they're almost as flexible as g2 are uh, but i believe that they're actually smarter but i think that the uh base mechanical skill level on g2 is probably a lot higher ah. like mickey for example like all these players on g2 they kind of intuitively understand the game you know i've worked with three of them in the past uh, and they 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 are they're not the kind of guys who will like give you a, a lecture for 45 minutes on their role but they're the kind of guys who will come to the same conclusion almost intuitively you know whereas all the guys on origin could probably be university professors in their specific role that that's that's kind of like a good way to kind of understand the the difference between them uh, so g2 are probably going to be like fast on a lot of these things especially because they had the pre-existing synergy from their original three members from last year but origin will catch up if you give them time uh, and i'm really looking forward to see how they handle in playoffs um but at least they survived longer than team liquid last time they faced them you know <laughs> yikes <laughs> 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 uh, i'm just thinking about these guys on origin like it must be so tough to be in their position because they are so close and you know like they know they have yep. the skill there um when you watch their games origin like do you and when they're facing against g2 do you see yep. a mental block there or is it purely the technical um, I guess gap uh, I don't see a mental block. I guess you could argue that Miffy was underperforming um, in the recent game against G2 that they played. Uh, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's a mental block mm. so much as just that they haven't they haven't encountered some of the things G2 threw at them. Uh, so, like, for example, this time I've never seen, like, an AD carry burn TP uh, that early on for a jungle play like that. Like, that whole thing seemed very much planned. Uh, and I, I assume they're looking at these kinds of situations and be like, oh, we didn't actually consider that this would be a thing. Now we know it's a thing. What do we do with that information? I, I think they're still like feeling G2 out uh, to a large extent, but they'll they'll learn from all of these uh, instances and 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 they'll grow. I'm not worried about them from a mental block. So even though it does look like when they played against them in playoffs, like first game was really 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 close, and then like pfft, for the rest <laughs> of the set, I'm not sure if I'd say that's mental block and more that in the first game G2 didn't want to like begin with like an opening gambit, but second game they'll go like funnel, you know, or something yeah. like this or some weird bot lane against Sonataric, all this kind of fish. I mean, Origin, we're talking about them in kind of this losing a G2 light, but they did have a really strong showing against Vitality where they absolutely dismantled them. And oh, Patrick yeah. had a 12-kill Sona game, and it wasn't wow. even alongside Tarek. So <laughs> what are your thoughts on this, like, Sona Tom Kench lane when Tarek isn't, uh, like, a viable option and the other team takes him away? I like it. It's a... Uh, well, mm. Well, this is the, that kind of implies that I like the idea of Sona bot lane in general. I find that fun, by the way. I've been trying it out in solo queue myself, no. and it's really quite fun only having, like, five CS a minute, but two-shotting everyone once you hit two <laughs> items. You can still go the same, like, Abyssal Mask setup on Tarm as you can do with Tarik, which adds to the strength that you get when you hit your two items of Lich Bane and your uh, Archangel Staff uh, on the Sona. And at that point, you're, you're almost unbeatable if you have any good game sense of the map, and Origin have insane game sense of the map. What's really good about the fact that they're trying more things with Sona is that means that they're one of the only teams that isn't G2 itself, where they're so confident in their AD carry's ability to play things that aren't necessarily a straight standard AD carry champion. Like, you saw Fnatic pull out Sona Tarek, like, once it didn't go so well, and yeah. then they never played it again, you know? Other teams haven't, like, stuck to this kind of Sona Tarek priority, whereas uh, Origin are showing that they can be as flexible, and that's really good, especially coming from such a young player like Patrick that he looks like he's able to match perks in almost all these kinds of things. That That's a really good sign. Hmm. Yeah, I can't see, I can't imagine Reckless playing Sona every week. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. um, let's switch gears and talk about another team, Vitality. So a lot of yeah. people were saying that they could be, you know, like top five. But uh, in week one, they got dumpstered twice. Yeah. <laughs> so how does this team gain some sort of consistency? Because it seems like they're often uh, misplacing their aggression. 
So I'm really careful about how I word this um, because I think their jungle system uh, is what needs a lot of work, but that's different from saying that their jungler needs a lot of work because okay. Mowgli has uh, played quite well on the other teams in the other regions and it hasn't been in the same way that he's played on Vitality, but the way he is playing on Vitality is the same way that every other jungle on Vitality has played. So it's like they've slotted him into a kind of system that seems a bit alien to him, and I don't actually think it's a good system. It's not one uh, where you're focusing really hard on snowballing your lanes per se. It's one way of focusing hard on preventing the enemy jungler from doing anything to your winning lane matchups. Like Vitality will always just try to get all winning early game matchups, and then if enemy jungler isn't in the game, then you guys are just gonna like win your lanes out by default kind of deal, and that seems to be Mowgli's job. But I don't really think that that's a good way to play out a lot of the champions uh, he's had and if you're against a really smart jungler like for example at the end of last year he played against self-made and Cajal in the last uh, two games of the split and versus self-made he was like three levels down and versus Cajal he was two levels down which is also very bad um, uh, and I, I feel like they're still playing this really archaic style that they've played for years it used to be that they'd have like a really good start and then teams would like figure out Oh, they just do this one thing every mm. single game and then they would counter that sometimes just in draft straight up they would counter that um so the game plans that work last split you know will work this split because they haven't done any roster changes which appeared to be the only way mm -hmm. that they could like reset that whole we've been figured out thing like they switched gilius for kickis now they switch kickis for mowgli right. but they haven't switched mowgli out again so everyone's very confident their game plans will work origins game plan almost netted them a perfect game versus vitality last year when alfari was sick like that that they're, they're kind of a binary team i like to call them the one of the two gatekeepers of europe okay. um because i feel like if you don't understand how to play out early game properly they'll just bore straight through you to your nexus mm -hmm. uh, and splice if you don't understand how to play your mid to late game setups uh, properly they'll just collapse on you and take the nexus uh that so i like to call those two guys like the gatekeepers and that so if you can beat both of them you're a good team so fanatic origin g2 are good teams if one of those two make worlds i'll be a bit but um <laughs> hopefully they make worlds because they figured out the other aspects of the game that the other guy is uh, yeah. really good at you know if both vitality and splice kind of merge together they would be a really 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 good team like the best of both worlds you know Mm -hmm. Just gotta make a 10-man roster, kind of like what Misfits are doing. Oh, I mean, they disappointed in yes. spring, but they've shifted uh, to summer to bring in this 10-man team. We didn't see any subs in week one, but what are your thoughts on this, uh, you know, the Misfits dabbling with this expanded roster? I, I like the idea of it. Um, what Misfits really lack right now is anybody who is willing to kind of pull the trigger on engages, you know? Um, so uh, I've, had, I've had their... Uh, a coach on my show for example Leeds United go check that on YouTube um, and he was saying that like Gorilla's very good at calling map setups but that he does kind of agree that like they do have this overall issue of engage priority there are players on their academy team which is now part of their roster in terms of 10 men who are very good at that sort of thing um, so Kire is a very aggressive early game player um, and Maxwell has already said he's learning a lot from him mm -hmm. uh, and Heva uh, Heva is an incredibly aggressive player and offline he looks really 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 good when he plays online he really lets himself go sometimes and it looks a little bit int um, but <laughs> when he, whenever he's playing offline he's he looks very consistently like a rock so like there was a huge difference between how misfits looked in the french league where they play every game at lan versus how they looked in the group stage of eu masters where every game was online the bot lane looked like pretty bad in the group stage of eu masters but then by the top four they were like they they had like a 12 kda something ridiculous by the end of it um mm -hmm. so they're they're kind of night and day in that regard but i think that he is the exact kind of player that you would want on that roster i think kira brings a lot of early game aggression but i think the engage thing is the problem because right now uh soaz is the one that is really like trying to call engages yeah. but mm -hmm. unless he has his job and he doesn't really have a champion uh where he can where he can do that effectively for all five of them so you saw him really trying to lead plays on the aatrox you know like really trying but it's nowhere near as effective he has to look for like picks and skirmishes he can't can't just engage a straight up five man team fight unless the enemy team is really trolling gives you like a, a five man knockup like the shy got at worlds last year pretty famously <laughs> um so right now they seem a bit java dependent but they do have options on their roster i wouldn't mind see seeing kire or heva uh, starting uh, i i also know there's a lot of like kire fans because he had a stint in turkey for yeah. example 
um, who would probably love to hear that. I think Kiri would be like a softer upgrade. I think he was the kind of personality that you do need on that team. Yeah. Uh, so I'd like to see him do something like that. At the very least, we know they're learning from each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. With 10-man rosters, there's a lot of pieces to plug in and to yeah. see what works, right? So I'm sure they'll take the time on that. Um, let's move on to another team who made a lot of changes as well, Rogue. Um, so after week yes. one, what did you think of this team with Vander, Wulai, Larson, and Inspired? So Larson and Inspired had a really strong debut at the same time as Woolite maybe had the worst possible oh. uh, comeback to the LCS he could have had. Um, but the next day, everything went a little bit more smoothly. Uh, but I'm really glad that Inspired and Larson were able to have such a strong game um, in both in both instances. Uh, I had a bit of a question mark in my own head about Inspired. I thought he looked really, really good in the Polish League when Vander was also with him on the team. But then when they uh, sub Vander out and they subbed Finn out to put them on the main team and get some of the only wins that they got mm -hmm. and they put Profit in and they brought up uh, a new support player whose name I think I know but I may butcher it so I'm not going to even try. <laughs> okay. um, sorry sorry if you're watching. Um, then it looked like Inspired kind of lost direction uh, in the mid game and it seemed quite clear to me that Vander uh, was at the very least leading a lot of that. Uh, but he seemed to be really comf like his early game seemed to carry him a lot in this set and uh, Vander was doing a lot of his typical uh, I'm really trying to make catches no matter what uh, kind of thing that he does in mid to late game. That's not necessarily the best macro, but at least you're doing something and the last iteration of Rogue didn't really do anything unless Vander was there. Um, you, you, saw, you saw this, for example, in the Misfits game. He really tried to force when he was like level 5 and the enemy bot lane was level 7. He tried to force around with Herald. Um, but, but, you know, that worked out really well in the next game where he didn't have such a huge deficit uh, from some bad decisions in laning face. Uh, I'm actually really excited to see this. It always excites me when uh, rookie players uh, work out. I always support them, uh, even if they don't necessarily have like a good start, but like most of the rookies had like a really good start mm -hmm. uh, to their season and inspired them last and I'm really rooting for them and they did really well. Mm -hmm. So It seems like that's the trend for uh, EU this year. There's a lot of new rookies coming yep. to the scene. There's a lot of players that we have our eyes on, but all the teams are trying to figure out the pieces, right? Exactly. So exactly. we have a lot to look forward to this season. Uh, veteran, we are always appreciate you coming on and chatting about the LEC with us. Thank you so much for joining us and, you know, enjoy watching the best region in the world. <laughs> yes, thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, now it's time to talk about the second best region in the world. Let's see what went down in week two of the LCS. And they can certainly chase for more. Do they find the opening? Akiti goes down. Viper has arrived and his fates are sharp. He's now on Black Fever Death Dance at level 13, and he is oh, ready to go. Spread to one to three. Heck from over the top. JJ's gone already, but Viper, he wants blood. He gets one answered back. Now fights for a bit more of a Brooklyn over the wall. Almost in lethal range, not just yet, though. Two for one to fly crest. Make it a third. Playmaker for Broken Blade. In. Finds the pullback on Citro, not the stun. They're going to go for the play right now. Fear comes in, finds two. The stun on top. Is this the fight that TSM needs? But Viper charges right back in. It's Venomous. Four kills. Stopwatch stops the reset. FlyQuest take down the Nexus and take down TSM. And we very good stun and actually crown. Yeah, taking a lot of damage to that one. Kingslayer gets the health back up and over the wall he goes. What a flash! Oh, that was beautiful. Poe finds the kill for Medios. Now it's a flash of Quigley. Is stunned up. Will it be the re-engage? No, it's Catacombs actually pushing Medios out. He's now gone. As, uh, yeah, that's a pickup on Wiggly. Now that stun comes in. What a teleport for Dokla. Looking at round three as Biofrost is stunned. I, I just see no reason why you should ever put yourself in that spot. Well, they're going to find the hook, though. Damage on Wiggly. Looking for the attack right here. Over into the back line. It's kill after kill. It is Optic taking down the base. A 30-minute win and a 3-0 start to the summer split. A little bit of damage coming out. Oh, oh, Wiggly! He makes it happen on not just one, but two. Jensen needs one more auto attack and he will fall. Right, you're just no. gonna get queued by Sejuani and then die. So uh, it is very dangerous and Jensen gonna have to retreat here. Power of evil deletes him. CLG has to pay respect to what this cannon is able to do. Jensen getting himself stoned away, rooted up, first and down, nearly gonna be killed and now he is gone. Not gonna be needed just yet. Chaos Storm was stolen and dropped down. Core JJ taken very low. Ruin into the back line as Sticks A goes on a killing spree. Team Liquid retreats. Double tries to throw out some boomerangs on his way back into the spawn platform. Oh, but he's that's gone. all he'll do. Ladies and gentlemen, Counter Logic Gaming take down Team Liquid. Round in 
mid lane, actually. Bit of the old switcheroo. Death touch there from Big. Looking to get a kill on the optic side of the map as Meteos is able to collect it. Crown continuing to keep him out of there. He's going to actually go down and start up the cannon so they can win the rest of the fight. Oh, and Dokla that takes that wild turtle. The hook on Pobelter almost gets him. But Meteos will flash in to make sure the kill happens as Viper finally able to get access to the team fight. But he can't even kill Meteos. Interstacy goes straight into the hook. Small chunk, but there oh, it is. Oh, what a Zonius from Crown! Clutch is out of the way. Viper finds an ulti, but that's going to be all she wrote on this one. Optic just play a perfect from minute one to minute 31. They're going to clean out the Nexus and they'll finish week two as the LCS's only undefeated team. All right, Matt, even after two weeks, the dust is still settling in yes. North America. Uh, so we should talk about the team that is currently undefeated. And it's shockingly, Optic Gaming. How did they start so strongly? And more importantly, is this for real? Am I dreaming? Well, you mean to say that the Immortals are undefeated. Oh, Because, <laughs> you know, the whole thing. Anyways, um, basically, it looks like their macro is honestly possibly the best in the LCS. They're not going to, like, technically beat you in lane or anything. But once it, they start expanding onto the rest of the map, they're just really strong at outplaying you and understanding where they need to be. And I mean, part of it is from Crown. He's playing Twisted Fate, he's playing Silas, he's going down to the bot lane and just kind of split pushing the entire time, getting an advantage by himself and then carrying it over to the rest of the game. So they seem to, I don't know what happened to them in the, in the off season, but they studied the game and now they seem to have a much better um, duo with, between Medios and Crown. Yeah. And it's just completely extrapolated to the rest of the map as well. So I'm very impressed with their macro. They're not going to beat you by like 20 kills to 10 or whatever, mm -hmm. but they're going to take it slow and they're going to beat you methodically. And that's almost more impressive. Put, put the former champion on a carry and you'll win. That's basically what I'm getting yeah. from this. He yeah. looks like he's Samsung Galaxy again. <laughs> he is the team. Yes. Um, let's talk about Cloud9 because they look like they were going to go undefeated, but then they lost against Golden Guardians. Yes. Uh, so where did they mess up there? They were so close. And the thing with Cloud9 is they like to push the limits, right? Mm -hmm. They understand that they're not going to win every single game in the regular season. And they want to kind of find out how far can we push this advantage. And in the game against Golden Guardians, they had a nice lead. And then they went to Baron. Uh, they kind of tried to get a little aggressive around the pit, ended up kind of throwing that team fight and giving Golden Guardians the Baron. And once that happens, you know, momentum kind of shifts the other way and the snowball happens. But nothing, nothing too concerning about Cloud9. Obviously, they're still a top tier team and they just like to push it. And the Golden Guardians have honestly performed pretty well so far, even though sometimes, you know, they kind of rely on Froggen being on the bird, which I'm sure we're going to touch on a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Cloud9, they'll be fine. They're just being aggressive, Cloud9, which we're, we're used to seeing, right? Yeah. So, nothing new. Nothing new. So no, no cause for concern. No. Um, like you said, we got to talk about Froggen and the bird. The he bird. should change his name to, to like, <laughs> yeah. Burden. I don't know. Something, because that's, <laughs> that's literally, good. he plays it, what, like, every week, and he wins every week Yeah, why it? a frog? So, yeah. Right? That didn't. Maybe Tom Kench. <laughs> Tom Kench, <laughs> Tom Kench right. You should switch over. Uh, so, like, at this point, do teams need to start banning, like, Anivia? Why are they giving him so much room to play this champion that he's killer on? Yeah, I don't know. It, like, Froggen, he, that's his control mage, right? Every team has, like, control mages in their pick band lineup. Some teams go to Syndra. Some teams have this. But yeah. Froggen just always goes back to comfort. That's something the Golden Guardians have done as a whole, too. I mean, Ole, he's one of the best Tom Kenches in the league, and no one's banned that away. I, I think he's, like, 17-4, and four, they were saying, on the cast on this champion. And yet they just let him, let him play it. So why are teams letting the Golden Guardians play? these comfort champions. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know Froggen's good on Nivea. We know Ole is good on Tom Kench. Just ban it. Just ban I don't it. see, obviously there's a lot of situations. Yumi's kind of new. Yeah. Uh, she's getting banned. There's a lot of strong champions right now. But if you keep getting beat by Froggen and his Nivea, something's wrong. You gotta, you yeah. gotta either have a, co a counter ready for it or ban away. It's almost like they're underestimating him a little, yeah. maybe. Disrespect. Maybe. Disrespect, and that's what you get, you know? <laughs> um, let's talk about Team Liquid because they went one and one this okay. week. Uh, they won against 100 Thieves kind of obviously yeah, free. but then they lost against CLG so what's going on with Team Liquid are they just like still trying to catch up I think so I mean you look around the, the rest of the world obviously G2's had a 2-0 week which is really solid but yeah. IG has lost two of their three best of threes SKT lost to a freak of freaks so every team that went to MSI except for G2 is still kind of struggling back in their own regional league mm -hmm. and it, it does have a toll on you I mean even G2 I'm sure obviously they're like heads and tails above some of the other teams right now um, but they they had a, a pretty strong game against Origin, but it wasn't as convincing as we've seen from them in the past. Yeah. And it just takes time because you, you lose a week of practice, you lose a week of vacation time, and you're just going straight from MSI, you have like one week off, yes. and then you're back to Double playing. Double even said he was burnt out coming yeah, back. So that, like, that's it's, what it is. You have no break. Out, yeah. You have no break. It's really tough on these teams. I think, again, it's not, it's not a concern, but you can only hold over the excuse of, oh, MSI, we were there yeah. for so long, right? I think this might be the last week you can have that excuse. 
Um, but let's get some credit to CLG too, because yeah. they had a really good game. We can't just be like Team Liquid has to beat CLG. If, if CLG <laughs> pulls out a good composition, right. they had Caitlyn uh, for Stixay, uh, Harvey was popping off on Victor. So let's give CLG some credit. It's yeah. not just Team Liquid, you know, Put having some respect their, on that. Uh, their <laughs> yeah. This is the whole Classic point of this respect. this ending here is respect. Respect. Let's, you know, yeah. let's give it to them. Yeah. CLG did a good job. Congrats yeah. to them. Uh, let's talk about TSM, where Grig did a good job and Acadian. Eh. Um, do you think TSM's success really boils down to who's in the jungle? It, it'd be too easy just to be like, you know what? They lost when Acadian plays, yeah. and they won when Grig plays. It, it, there's obviously a lot more to it than that. It obviously, if Broken Blade's having a good game in the top lane, uh, when when Grig's in, then you know the whole yeah. thing changes. So you have to give responsibility where it's due. Obviously, mm -hmm. part of it might be due to the fact that Acadian might not be prioritizing situations properly, or he's getting you know uh, losing just in the head-to-head -head matchup. But you can't just blame that one situation. Sometimes it's team comp. Sometimes it's everything. Like right. if you put both players in the exact same team comps against the exact same team, then we can see. But obviously, it's difficult when the situations vary so, so much. So at this point, you don't think one jungler is more suitable for the team in general, or you like the fact that they're just going back and forth, switching. I mean, I think I think you keep them both situationally. If, if one player is better at these aggressive champions and one is better at tanks, yeah. then then you keep them for situations like that. Obviously, you can't keep it so clear that when you put in Grig, the other team's going to be like, they oh, know. they're going to play a carry. So you need to keep it somewhat on the down low and have them both play all the champions. Mm -hmm. um, but just just keep trying it out. And obviously, if this keeps going on, the, the tempo size right now is really low. Yeah. Right, it's only two games for each. But if we keep going forward week by week, and Acadian loses every game, and Grig wins every game, then okay, I'll buy into it. But right yeah. now, I still think it's it's too short to be like, you know what, Grig must be the starting jungle. Bench the other one. Exactly. Yeah. Let, let's hold off on yet. it. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have one order of business left. Yes. We have to pick a player of the week. So Matt, who are you giving it to? Last week, I gave it to Crown, and I said he'll probably never get it again. No, you are not giving it to him again. And I'm going to give it to Crown what? again. I don't want to because I'm going back on what I said, but <laughs> I, I have to, okay? It, I, I have to do it because okay. this guy has just been such a huge part of what Optic has done in their 4-0 start. I mean, I talked about his twisted fate, and he's the only person right now in the LCS who's pulling this champion out and just understands uh, what he needs to do. Every time he presses the R button, he's not using it to go and find a flank. He's using it for vision, uh -huh. and then he'll go off to a side lane, get farm, and just pick up some more and more of an advantage. And he had like a three-level lead uh, against FlyQuest and a two-level lead in his other game of the, the week. So he's just... He's building such a huge lead on his own yeah. that it's super impressive, and he's just on a whole other level than what we saw in spring right now, right? So I mentioned that he looks like the Samsung, Samsung Galaxy guy, yeah. and I mean, you have a world champion performing um, like a world champion should, mm -hmm. so I gotta give it the crown right now, and Optics 4-0, sure, what is they this? Are, they are undefeated, so it makes sense that you're giving it to the biggest carry on the undefeated yeah. team. <laughs> Fine, if you wanna be so yeah. obvious, Matt. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay, that's okay. Sh shout out to Crown, because you're doing an amazing job. Well, that's all we got for Esports in 30 today. Thanks to Veteran for joining us and catching us up on the LEC. And then tomorrow, we got Overwatch League, so be sure to tune in. And we're going to wrap up everything here. So we have Unmuted tomorrow, too, a brand new one. And I think that's it. So be sure to tune in tomorrow. You can catch us on all the socials at Squad State. We'll see you there.